Welcome back to Oism. I'm going to come back with a political video in this segment, and it's really more of a current events video. I find that sometimes it's good to mix up current events and politics with health because they tend to affect your mental health. And because they affect your mental health, that's just as relevant as the physical foods that you eat. So I'm going to try to keep this video short. You know, it's good. this video is going to kind of remind me of what my Ferguson video did last year, where... In four days, we've had three shootings, one in Texas, one in Louisiana, one in Minnesota. Basically, it's all the same MO. Three, well, unarmed black males getting killed by police. And it's interesting in a sense because it's a different time now where one actually got caught on video and posted on Facebook or live streamed on Facebook. And it's different in a sense. It's kind of like what I've, I've been telling people sometimes with some of my transnational podcasts. That I don't do no, in the YouTube format. The world is changing. It's a different world. It's changing so fast that sometimes even the people who are doing the, the oppression, right, especially on the lower end, don't change with it. So in the past, you could be a cop and do anything you want. I mean, you could have basically been a cop, plant evidence on anyone, <laughs> right, and who's going to challenge you? There was no cameras. There was no nothing. Now everyone has a camera. Every cell phone has a camera. Every cell phone can, tra- can, can record conversations. It's a different ball game at this point. And it seems like a lot of times they have, the police haven't caught up to that. And, you know, the problem, I mean, it's got a lot of outrage because, I mean, in Texas, a veteran, which they just said today was a military vet, killed five police officers. And I think seven more were injured. And they're calling that the bloodiest day since 9-11. Because you got to understand, at the end of the day, um, police officers, it's rare that they get killed, especially in groups. Like, you might get a cop get shot and die, maybe two, but you don't get five. You don't get seven more injured, right, which is like 12 in total. Like, you don't get that in one shot. So, yeah, it, it was bloody. But at the same time, I don't advocate, you know, violence on police officers. And I, I, don't, I, and I say that not as a pacifist because I know the first thing that someone is going to say when they hear that is, oh, this is a spiritual channel. Looks like spiritual people tend to be very pacifist. You fight fire with fire. And sometimes you do fight fire with fire. Um, sometimes fighting fire with fire is more effective than fighting with water. But that's very rare. And if you fight fire with fire, you have to be equally matched. That's the difference. If, if, if you start attacking police officers physically, because no one wants to address the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is this. In America, in general, people of European descent are scared physically of people of African descent. That is not, we can pretend, but that is the case. That, that's, that's very obvious. It's been like that since the beginning of, since, shoot, I don't want to say it's the beginning of time since we started interacting with each other, but it's definitely been like that for the 600 years that this country has been around. No question. It's definitely been, I would say, I, I, I would say this, it didn't, I would say the Romans and Greeks didn't really have that fear for the most part. I mean, they might have still had it. No, no question. <laughs> they had a little bit, but, that fear started to come in more when you say look at historically after Rome fell and then because the Romans and Greeks, you know, still got their knowledge from the Egyptians. So they were still more used to that look. But then when you used to start talking about the Anglo Saxons and people further up north, yeah. That's been a fear that's been going on since the beginning of time. And the problem is a systematic problem. And sometimes when people hear that they don't want to get deep, right? They want to keep it simple. They want to say, well, let's just address the cop problems. Let's just protest. Let's just make songs. Let's make songs. Let's write letters. And all those things are important. All those things I wouldn't say shouldn't be, like someone shouldn't do. But I would say this in general. Um, a lot of times what ends up happening is that for a lot of people, they end up addressing the symptom and not the cause. And... A lot of times this happens because the cause is too painful. You know, when you deal with American history, American history is very painful, um, especially to certain people. To other people, it's not painful, but then you could still circle around and say it is because then there will be certain things they don't address, right? So in a sense, it's painful for everyone. It's just that some people have more, fi- for some people it's more physical and, you know, a deeper psychological scar. For some people, from other races, or other people, it's just more like, oh, something of shame. You know, you're with your friends and you don't want to bring that up because it's embarrassing. So even that is, is still different, but it's the same thing in, in the end of the day where there's things about our history we just don't want to address. 
And whether you think that's right or wrong, because this is not really about judging it. What it is more about is saying is this is the outcome of it. You know, we do a lot of things like as spiritual people. We talk about psychology and, you know, creating your own, you know, making sure managing your thoughts and creating, you know, good frames and all this other type of stuff. But we don't really realize that cultures have frames, you know, <laughs> and, and, and a cultural frame and a cultural thought form and a cultural consciousness is in some ways much harder to change than an individual. No question. Because if there's 20 people in a group and one of them changes, yeah, the other, other 19 people still doing the same thing they were doing before, the change is going to, uh, on a collective level, is going to happen much slower. And if you look really as us as a, as a country, we have not, we are still acting like if you say, okay, the origin of this country, you know, you could get into when, but let's just say, I don't know, 16, 1700s, right? For the most part. You come in and you say, has things changed as much? And, and again, and I'm not even talking about, we're not going to get to the racial stuff first, right? We're just talking about as a whole, right? We still have, I mean, look, we still haven't had a woman rule the country yet, right? Uh, we just got an African-American president, but, you know, I mean, that took a lot of, <laughs> that took a lot for that to happen. And, and that was always controversial where people said, well, maybe he's not really American, right? How is that any different than if you take that 300 years ago, the same thing would happen. I mean, yes, he be, he, he became president now, where 300 years ago may not have happened, but those same things would have happened. 300 years ago, they would have said, well, he's, he, he's a slave. He's not really one of us. And we're still saying the same things 300 years later. So what's happened as a civilization is we've made a lot of technological improvements. You know, our technology is on point. And because of our technology is on point, we fool ourselves into thinking that we are actually a, a civilization that's worthy of the, the civilizations of the past. But we're not. If you base it on technology, okay, you got that. But there's this, this. But other than that, you can't really say we have made that much progress. We still have problems with racism. We still have problems with sexism. We still have problems with maybe even religions that foreign religions we still have problems with that we have more problems now with the environment than we had before yes we could live longer because of technology but you can make the argument our lifestyle is much worse now you know we have synthetic drugs now we have i mean we have mutated foods so when you look at all these things and this is not even getting into anything sticky yet this is more like oh if you're a deep thinker and you want to look at study civilizations and you go and say oh well american civilization is on this plateau France is here, Canada's here, you know, Nigeria is here, right? We, that's if you're intellectual. You say, okay, but if you're not an intellectual, you probably say, I don't really care about that anyway, right? I just care about my everyday life. But the thing is, when you just care about your everyday life, the problem comes in is that the system is built on your everyday life. And if the system is built on your everyday life, the system would not want you to change your routine. So, if there's been a war on blacks in general, but black males for sure, physical war, um, since the beginning of this country's history, that's just, the system is doing this now, right? So we, it kind of has compromised certain things. You know, it, it can't be as aggressive anymore overtly. So there's, it, it had to compromise. It had to give up certain things and in order to keep itself running. Because in the end of the day, that's all the system is about. The system is about keeping itself running. That's what people don't really realize. So when you say the system, if I'm going to start, if I'm, if I'm working 9 to 5, if I'm going to Starbucks, if I'm going to college, if I'm, you know, I buy a house when I get a little bit of money saved, that is the system. That's what makes the system run. That is the system. So when you look at it, the system itself is going to protect itself against anything that's going to bring change where the system has to compromise more than it wants to. First of all, it's going to probably resist anything that, has to co that it has to compromise anyway. But it's like checks and balances. Some things it could get away with compromises, other things it can't. So the problem comes in is that, yes, there's no question, there's been a war of, of against people of African descent in America, but really globally, in the Western world for sure. But we talk about America for, for now. 
since the beginning of the creation of America. Now, as as much of an injustice as that is, as much as disappointing as that is for other, for some people, if you look at the map, we haven't changed. Like the same questions we were asking in the 1700s are the same questions we're asking now, right? Is America a Christian country? Should we should we should we let in other religions? Should we let in immigrants that are not from Europe? Should we let in should should we how much power should we give women? How much power should we give any ethnic eth, you know minority group? Those are the, are the questions they were asking three hundred years ago. So if there has been no evolution, I think the problem people have is that they look and say, yes, we're more advanced when it comes to technology, but when it comes to social issues, when it comes to cultural issues, when it comes to I mean, just issues of just being a decent human being, you could make the argument we've devolved. And if that's the case, then of course we're going to still have the problems that you're seeing today of police officers killing black males. Because police officers are the ground, they're the foot soldiers of the system. So the problem comes in is that when you try to go to the foot soldiers to try to make compromise for them to stop, they're not going to stop because they don't know how to stop. That's like saying you're going to go to war and fight, and then you're going to go to the soldiers to, to, to stop fighting. No, either you're going to have to pay the soldiers off, or you're going to have to go to the leaders and make a, some kind of backroom deal, and then the war is over, which happens all the time, right? As they say, war is just a continuation of politics, honestly. But the failed approach I think other, some people have is, yes, you must protest. So you have to, in a sense, keep the pressure on the police, yes, if it's done a non-violent way. Like, if it's violent... You just ask it for trouble. You ask it for trouble, and you ask it for trouble in a way that we all know you can't handle it. So why even go there? That's just being real, right? America is not set up like a third world country is set up. And this is not me, you know, picking on people or, or saying you shouldn't fight for defend yourself and stuff, but you have to be realistic. America is not a third world country. In a third world country, you can go in, and, and, and they do it all the time. <laughs> Pablo Escobar, how many cops did he kill? Man, people do that all the time, right? But America, when you're in a first world nation, the whole point is in first world nations, the system is stronger than in third world nations. In third world nations, the system is held by a threat. That's why you could have cartels running countries and stuff like that because those are third world nations or even sometimes second world nations. In first world nations, that's considered almost impossible. If you're going to have cartels running the country, you're going to have energy cartels and banking cartels. You're not going to have something as low as drug cartels running first world nations. They might run sections of it, but in general, then that's not going to happen. So the problem comes in is that people want this type of stuff to stop, but they don't want to study the system like a grown-up. And if you don't study the system like a grown-up, just like if you have pimples in your body and you just keep plick, plucking them, you know, you take some Clarisol, you get rid of them, but you don't change your diet or change whatever you're eating or whatever you're doing, you're going to keep getting pimples. That's the point. At the end of the day, the change has to come from the handlers of the system. It has to go from the top. And unfortunately, because we are a country, and this is across all nationalities, that deals with comfort. That's the thing. We're a country that's obsessed with comfort. And in the end of the day, if I'm getting my coffee, if I'm going to school, if I'm partaking in the system, I am not going to want to change and do something that's going to change the system because then my lifestyle changes. So what does that mean? Well, it means then that I'm going to support whether I think, I, whatever I'm doing it overtly or not, or even consciously or not, I'm going to support things that's making the system run and that means that it probably is running on the backs of some group that doesn't have as much power and that's what's going on right now the problem comes in is that and you go back to to the foundation of this country is that in a sense when they took africans from their homeland they had to get rid of their culture they had to get rid of their spiritual system they had to get rid of everything right that's how you make them more docile you make them better workers and and in a sense, it's the same way when if you come in and you say, well, immigrants have to basically give up their culture and live the American lifestyle. It's basically almost the same thing. It's just that the, in the past, an African way was more extreme. The reason why it's more extreme is because at the end of the day, this is something people don't want to see. And I'm not saying this as a person who's getting into any type of racial superiority. I'm not, right? That's not my thing. But you have to be realistic as well. If... 
The African continent produced the world's oldest spiritual systems. And then the day, you can make the argument all spiritual systems originated from it. And if you if you have handlers in the physical world that are very materialistic and anti-spiritual, it's going to make logical sense that then they will be anti-African. The problem comes in is that people are so materialistic, and this is people of all races. When I say anti-African, yes, if you're materialistic, you're going to go by people of African descent visually. But in general, that's also a spiritual component of that. So there's many people now who have African descent who no longer live, practice an African lifestyle. Right? So, in the end of the day, what, ha what ends up happening, which, which is what makes it worse, that's like you not having any money, but everyone thinks you have money. And all the stick-up kids, all the people who are going to rob you, all the con men, all the... Everything, all the hackers, right, on every level, from the poor to the to people who are like to steal from the rich, are gonna come at you, but then you don't have any money. So then your stuff is gonna be worse with because you're getting robbed and you have no money. So it's almost like you're you're suffering double. That's what's going on now. The system itself, when you if you are if you have a threat of practicing that type of spirituality that the African systems used to practice it they don't practice it most of them don't practice it anymore like most of the most systems now that you are seeing is a remnant of the old system a remnant of a system that used to be even when people go to these spiritual systems right and they say well i'm gonna you know i've been oppressed all my life and i'm gonna go and start practicing these new religion these not not new but new to them meaning they're reclaiming their culture that never works either because you're only doing that because you're reacting you really don't you really don't love your culture so my circumstances are forcing you to pretend that you like your culture, but you really don't love it. That's the difference. And because of that, you have to take some responsibility as well in the sense that if you say that you're a God, if you say that you're the creator of the universe, all the other stuff I hear people say, well then, if life is a competition and life is war, whether you accept it or not, the problem comes in is that in general... Once that happens, you are then going to, the competition or the people coming at you is going to be greater. And if you don't, basically, it's not really sticking up for yourself, but if you don't make contact with the energies that you used to make contact with, right? Like you, maybe you're a descendant of people who used to make contact with those energies. You don't do it anymore. The system is still going to come at you. So... That's why it's that's why it's a bigger problem than people think, is because the same people who are the victims of what's going on are not going to want to do spiritually what they have to do to get themselves out of it, and even physically. So the physical part of it is would be is that again, and this this is the problem with spiritual systems. Now spiritual systems are not, are not grounded in the physical; they're not grounded in reality. So in the end of the day, if you look at astrology, the planet of liberation is Mars, right? Any oppression, any, any type of, of oppression that you may have and you want to be liberated from that, freed from that, is going to have to come from Mars, right? It's kind of like, and when you understand that, that's getting into the realms of business, it's getting into the realms of war, but war only works if the person is, 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 is weaker than you, right? Obviously, your opponent or the person who's oppressing you has more guns, has a big, they basically control the whole system. So from that angle, the war has to be secondary, the physical war. But it has to come from economics. It has to come from business. It has to come from blacks who have money. Not just because we've had, you know, they've had stuff like Black Wall Street where you say, okay, I'm going to get a business and build it and I'm going to get a city and I got my own city and I'm going to make a city all black, right? That could be counted. All you got to do is just destroy the city, <laughs> right? And that comes in because, again, people don't have basic understanding. Like, people don't study economics. As, like, people don't study economics. People don't study culture. People don't, they study history, but they only study their history, right? They don't study, like, this is a global world. You have to study global history. People don't do those type of things. So when you're operating with a system that is multilayered, that is global, that exists from every single point, 
you could think of, right? Financial, <laughs> entertainment, any point you could think of. That that's the the system encompasses all that. In order to even, I'm not gonna even say defeat the system, but in order to change the system and understand it, your mind has to be able to think on those layers. Unfortunately, people's minds don't. So when it comes to the concept of power, this is where people mess up. Because if you say, well, you have two resistance, you got the resist, you got one side that's more passive, that's more, um, you know, they're more into protesting, they're more into, which is, I'm not going to say it's wrong, they're more into basically axing the system to change, right? And then you got the other side, which is more aggressive, more, basically, they were threatened to actually physically demand the system to change. The problem comes in is that naturally because people are so extreme, they're going to go either, either one, either or. But the solution is somewhere in the middle where the reason why at first, if you just say economics by itself, I'm going to build my own city, right? Or I'm going to take over the city. Why that doesn't work by itself? If Because you're by yourself. This is actually one of the biggest secrets. This is actually even a spiritual secret that people don't really realize. There is no such thing as power. Power doesn't exist. Power exists. Power is basically a communication of different, of, of, of basically different networks working together for a common goal and striking as one. If you look at the system, the system is global. But look at how the system spreads to every country. It goes to every country, looks at the class or a group of people who would go along with their program. Then they make an alliance with that country. Then they suppress the poor of that country. That people who help them becomes rich. And the system spreads to that country and then uses the resources, whatever they need in that country, to bring it back here, right? So, in a sense, power is basically, um, you could say, an alliance of different networks coming together for a common goal. So, the problem is that if you come in from the traditional, not really flexible mindset of i'm gonna just make this about me i'm gonna just make this about myself right i'm not gonna understand anyone else and again this is not for the foot soldiers this is not for the people protesting i'm talking about the blacks who have means right whether it's financially whether it's intellectually whether it's resources yes if you're on the ground you can do whatever you want you can protest and you should right what i'm talking about the people who have the resources you have to make alliances with other people who have resources who may not look like you who you have to figure out what they want and at the end of the day find a common goal work together pull your resources together and then you make change that's the difference yes people are going to fight that people are going to argue with that but that's if you look at how the system globally is run that is actually how it's run think of it when america was first was first started it's kind of really in the northeast the irish the jews and uh the italians came together they had beef with each other, but when it came together, when it came time to build something meaningful, they did. They tend to be either Catholic or Jews, right? Jew, who do Judaism. In the South, you have more people from, kind of more religious people, so more British, more people from Britain, more people from Germany, right? And they came, and they went to the South, and they built that. And all those people before that had beef with each other. But they were able to come together and build something that's lasting. That's the difference. So, in the end, so the, so think of what what this means, though. The reason why another reason why the system comes down harder on black folks is because black folks actually have the capabilities of doing that even more. Because, and basically, see when we look at when a black person looks at someone black, they're gonna probably come in Africa, America. The Caribbean, boom, that's it, right? You even stretching and trying to get Latin America, even stretching, even going there. But when you look at it from the realistic point of view, yeah, Latin America has more blacks than even here, like you know, North America does. Even even places that you don't associate with being African descent, you know, there's black Arabs, there's black Filipinos, right? Shoot, there's black people in Australia, Aborigines. So. The system has to come down on black folks even harder just from that angle as well because naturally, because Africans were the first race, 
you can if you're just a material person you can look around and still see yourself in almost every country even if you don't see yourself you're seeing a descendant of someone who look like you that becomes more of a threat because the base of power is an alliance of different networks coming together for a common good uh, not even common good for a common goal it could be evil right for a common goal that's the difference we don't really realize that you know we would look at a war we would look at america defeating iraq Right, but we won't look at it as oh no, there were some people in Iraq who opened the doors for America to defeat Iraq. We don't look at it like that. Like, we look at America and Russia having beef, but we don't look at it as no. If you're a capitalist in Russia on a certain angle, you might want the Western lifestyle where the communists in Russia may not. So in order to beat the Russians, you have to make an alliance to people within that country who have your values. See, the whole concept of power is illusion. The whole concept of war is an illusion. Before war starts, there's always a handshake in the room. Don't don't ever fool yourself. There's always a handshake in the room. That's why people could come up with all kind of conspiracy theories about revolution. You could come up with all kind of conspiracy theories about revolution because in the end of the day, that's exactly what happened. Revolutions, yes, to the little men, they get spun a story. But to the big men, yeah, you're going to have to compromise. Even if people don't know that you're compromising, on some angles, you're going to compromise. Especially if you have the interests of the common good at heart. Right? So, in a lot of ways... War is a business, <laughs> honestly. And the system itself is a business. The system itself is a machine, not even a business, it's a machine. And you can't ask a machine to change. That's what people don't really realize. This, it's funny. The system right now is more of a machine than it was even two, 300 years ago. This is why some people might say things are actually worse in some ways because it's a machine now. It's such a machine that even when people get upset about people like Donald Trump running and this one running... This, this machine is running in such a way where it's not going to actually let things go too far left or right anymore at all. It, it's, it's really more about compromise. So in a sense, that's why it's actually harder to change it. Because for a lot of people, as much as police brutality may be an issue for only certain segments of the population, for those same segments of other populations, it may not be as much of an issue. Even for some black folks living in certain parts of the country... It may not be as much of a problem for black folks in other parts of the country. It may not be as much of a problem for black folks maybe in the lower income neighborhoods, right? So then, because we're so used to comfort, those people are going to say, well, I'm, I see it on TV. Maybe once in a while I get stopped, but in general, nothing happened to me, so why should I do anything about it? And once that takes place, it is very hard to change that mindset because we are a country of comfort. And because we're a country of comfort, Anything that basically is going to break that comfort, we're not going to do. And because of that, it's almost impossible to change it then the way you want to change it. Because once something becomes a machine, you can never ask a machine to change. You actually have to actually be able to program the machine to change. And if you want to be able to program the machine to change, it actually means being a grown-up. That's what it means. And when it means being a grown-up, it means you're going to have to do grown-up things. You're going to have to do things that you may be considered boring, things that you may not even want to do. Right? You may be a person who says, why do I got to study history of a certain country I don't know about? Because the system is global. If you want to understand the system, you got to understand everywhere. I mean, look what you're saying. You're basically saying you want to go up against a machine that you can have the CIA and NSA. And what do they do? They go to other countries, analyze what's going on in other countries, come back and give our leaders... A blueprint of what's going on. You got people in Wall Street in the economic sector go to other countries, find out what's going on in you know the market of other countries, come back and, and build a game plan for how to attack that country. And then attack doesn't mean physical; it can just mean entering that marketplace. So that is the system. So if for you, if the system for you is only your block, if the system for you is only your neighborhood, if the system for you is only your state, right? then you can never really rise to a level where you can program the system to do something else that you want it to do. And that's the problem. And that's why it's harder to fix. And that's why it's unfortunate because it seems like the problem will continue. And as spiritual people, the part that makes it hard is that even spiritual people are guilty of that as well. Because for most spiritual people, if you look around, if I say for a spiritual person, oh, let's, let's get into some African spirituality, most people, no matter if they know it or not, they kind of, if you're not 
it, shoot, you could even be of African descent and you don't want no part of your own systems, right? But if you're not part of African descent, you're definitely going to be like, have a pause. Like, why I got to do that? You definitely have a sense of fear. And it's okay. Because, like I said in my previous video on my regular channel, we are trapped in a construct. Everyone wants to be spiritual. But spirituality represents a type of consciousness that is beyond the human construct. And I don't think human beings are ready for that in general. So, yes, that's why then when you look at our spiritual systems, our spiritual systems are not going to be able to address the problems that you see today. And that's why the problem that you see today is getting worse. And that's why it's getting darker. Because in the end of the day, once you say human construct, even that can be broken down into what human and what race, human and what culture. Then it goes to human and what social class, human and what religion. It starts dividing itself up so much. Every time it divides itself up, everyone wants to pretend it's not dividing itself up. And then the problem continues and the problem gets expanded sometimes. And that becomes a huge issue. That becomes something that's hard to break. And it's unfortunate because in the end of the day, not only are people losing their lives. As a human civilization, once you go even beyond that, if, when you go on the intellectual level of trying to understand how can we make human civilization great again how can we stop all the things from going on whether it's environmental problems whether it's anything that you deal with as a civilization it is hard to change it because at the end of the day it requires addressing things no one wants to address and that's in all races as much as as much as some people might talk some people don't want to address and this could be people of African descent. Okay, I get back into my African culture. African culture to me is Egypt. Look at why you're picking Egypt. You got to be able to monitor your own thoughts. Why are you picking Egypt? Out of everything in the African continent, why you pick Egypt? Because Egypt is considered the safest part of the African continent. So you're still doing almost the same thing that a white person does. If, if either they make the Egyptians all white, when and when at that point they still know they got to tap into Africa, so they, they tap into Egypt, they tap into the safest part. But then they say we got to make it white. Or the even more extreme, you just bypass Egypt and then you just tap into anything of any culture that's not Africa. How is, how is you, as the black person or person of African descent, any different when you say, well, I'm going to get back to Africa, but the most African I could get is Egypt? Same thing. Basically, it's still part of the same issue. If you know your history, Egypt was the center of African knowledge. It was the part of Africa that outsiders can go to and feel safe. Like outside, it's the safest part for them to go. The further south you go, hey, you know, it gets, it gets kind of tricky for outsiders. So when you are doing the same thing that, you know, people were doing thousands of years ago, you cannot get mad when you see this problem escalating because cultures have psychology, right? There's a cultural psychology. In regular human psychology, if you don't address something, it comes up and it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse. That's how civilizations get destroyed. That's why civilizations end. So I hope when you listen to this video, you understand that at the end of the day, the problems you're seeing today is systematic. The problems you're seeing today is problems that because a lot of people, whether you come from the spiritual angle, have not wanted to address, whether you just come from the everyday angle, whether, you just, whether you're just living your life and you're just trying to make it, these things are happening. It may seem strange, but it's happening because at the end of the day, us as a society of all colors don't want to address these things. And when we don't address it, it's coming back now and it's getting worse. That's why I said on some angles, we're worse now than we were 300 years ago. So hope this helps. Until next time, peace.